Hey, my legion. How y'all doing today? I've been doing a lot of, like franchise movie franchise videos. Um, I thought it was time to finally do one for Text Chainsaw Mask. I've been, I, I, I actually was planning on doing it. I kind of just put it aside, like, you know, with the Nightmare on Elm Street, uh, Halloween and Friday the 13th, it kind of goes in sync to go to Texas Chainsaw Massacre film franchise. And this one is more unusual than the other ones because a lot of times it seems like a lot of the Texas Chainsaw sequels are just trying to remake the very first original film. But I wanted to talk about the whole history of the film. I actually got some box office stats on some of these movies too. Some did really well, some uh, bleh, not so well. Let me make sure. Okay. Where the hell was I at? Uh, okay. Now, the very first one, of course, is the classic 1974 film, The Texas Chainsaw Massacre, that's very infamous because of its title. I remember growing up as a kid, uh, when we got a VCR, I know my dad was adamant about not letting me see it because of the title alone. And essentially, it's not... It's not as... Uh, as gruesome as the title suggests, but it's definitely the best of the series. It's definitely the most powerful. It's definitely the scariest. Um, and it was to the to vision of Toby Hooper. Back then, it was pretty infamous because they, it was based off by uh, Ed Gein. And originally, if you've seen the movies, uh, the Ed Gein uh, case, he was a serial killer, has been... Uh, made a lot of movies. It's, it's Psycho was like the very first one, but it was loosely, loosely, loosely based on it. And that was the hit Alfred Hitchcock film. And then time went on, they had movies like Three on a Meat Hook, which was loosely based on that. Deranged, which is probably one of the most accurate films of that. And then they did Ed Gein, that was about Ed Gein and Texas Chainsaw Massacre. And, uh, yeah, I, I love the original one. It's And it had the... Uh, it was cool, and it was used like they used the... Uh, movie critics review as part of the tagline to the film and it was Rex Reed saying uh, let me see if I get the see if they have the quote for the rich one I mean that's pretty uh, I want to get the exact quote let's see I don't know if it mentions it list of I'll see also list of, yeah he said I think he called it the most horrifying film I've ever seen and that was the Rex Reed review and that was like used definitely for uh oh you know the in the tagline just like uh they were trying to do that with the evil dead the original one from 1974 with stephen king saying uh the most ferociously original horror film ever made or close to it and they were using that kind of in the thing but it didn't take off like direct read that for Texas chainsaw and i remember seeing and it got re-released uh, uh multiple times and it has the budget right here was $140,000 and it made $30,859,000 in the United States and worldwide. And it's a great movie. I, I really liked it. Now, much, much later, 12 years later, uh, Canon Films, I was a big fan of Canon back in the 80s, redid it and it, it did, uh, it just saw Text Chainsaw Massacre 2. And it was directed by the same guy, Toby Hooper. However, the filmmakers were uh, very angry with him. I saw, I didn't know about this till much later because I saw a great movie called Electric Boogaloo, The History of Canon Films, which I highly recommend for everyone to see. I wish my dad could have seen it. Uh, it's a great, great film. And they had Toby Hooper talking about the movie and they said that the filmmakers, uh, Menachem Golan and, I can't remember the other guy's name, but it was Golan Globus, um, Knocking Golan and oh, I can't remember. Well, anyways, they were mad at him. They said, "I thought you were trying to make a horror movie, a movie that's scary." And he said, "This movie's funny because he tried to make a very dark comedy, horror comedy, and that's what my uh, text chainsaw two turned out to be." Dennis Hopper was in it, and it has a big, big budget back for the back then. Uh, four thousand, four million, four thousand, four million seven hundred dollars, and uh, total budget worldwide was eight million. Twenty-five thousand eight hundred seventy-two dollars, and that uh, that was Canon's edition. I love the second one. Bill Mosley was in there, and also they had uh, the one guy coming back. Let me see the guy who played the chef. 
see if they have his name. Uh, Medgeen. I don't know. Okay, they have the. They should have the characters. Yeah, Yoram Golis and Manahem Golan and Yoram Golis. Okay. Actor portraying Leatherface. Okay, they got the Leatherface. I don't know. That, uh, he, he was the original guy that played the chef was in this one, too. And Bill Mosley, along with that, played Chop Top. <coughs> I love the second one. I know the critics hated it, but I loved it. I give it a 4 on 10 out of 10. Now, next comes uh, Leatherface's Text Chainsaw Massacre 3, which I was not too fond of. Uh, New Line Cinema took the reins of it, and they had a great uh, teaser trailer to it. A little silly, though, but they had, like, uh, I think they had Leatherface. They had the Lady of the Lake. Her hand came up. It had a chainsaw, and the chainsaw said to saw his family on the uh, thing, and then it gets thrown up there, and then you see Leatherface grab it and goes like this, Text Chainsaw Massacre, Leatherface Text Chainsaw Massacre 3. And I didn't see it right away. Um... Uh, I had a hell of a time when I was in Germany. It was always out. It was always running because that was a bad time for films. They had a lousy Halloween 5 and an equally lousy Halloween uh, Friday 13th Part 8, Jason Takes Manhattan, which I hated. And uh, this was not quite as bad, but not very good. And I didn't see that till I got home on leave after I left Germany. You know, I was home for like 35 days. I think I saw it on Cinemax. And I think I saw it in the morning. Yeah, I wasn't too impressed with it. Um, it had the heavy metal soundtrack in it. I do like that they had... Uh, probably the best thing about it was a music video from uh, Laws Rocket, of all people, who did uh, the song Leatherface. Great song, great video. Even though Leatherface was not... Uh, I mean, not Leatherface. The Laws Rocket is not a great band. But I mean, I remember I got their one CD. I can't remember what it was called. And it had the song uh, Fire in the Hole, which I remember seeing in uh, on the Hard and Heavy video series. I remember getting the CD. And the only song I, ever, I, I also remember on there was Chasing Charlie. I liked the CD, and then when I got home, I bought another Lost Rod called Know Your Enemy. And that, and that was on cassette, and that absolutely sucked. And Lost, Lost Rock has gone down to being an awful band, but I liked that one CD, but boy... No, your enemy. I couldn't even listen to the whole thing. I did with like a non-album or non-cassette. But their music video of uh, Leatherface, probably the best in the song, is probably the best thing they've ever done. But I mean, as far as like the original text change, so ten out of ten. The second one, a ten out of ten. Leatherface text change, so Massacre three, maybe a four out of ten. Now next came a movie that oh okay, it was originally made in nineteen ninety five. Oh. I forgot, the, um, for Leatherface, Text Chainsaw Massacre 3, they don't have a budget written down, they don't know, but the total gross in the United States was 5765562 Well, that's worldwide, too. I mean, that's all these totals are worldwide. Well, some right there. Because they don't know the foreign totals right here. Um, next team, Text Chainsaw Massacre 3, Next Generation, which I was not a fan of. I liked it just about as much as I liked the third part three, and they had like uh, it was originally made in 1995, and then I guess re-released in '97 on uh, videotape. As far as I'm concerned, I saw it on videotape. I don't know if it played anywhere else. Uh, no, no, I forgot what the hell I was going to say. Yeah, I don't know if it played anywhere else. Uh, I remember seeing it on videotape, and I don't know it has like, uh, like first appearances from Matthew McConaughey and uh, and uh, Zellweger. I can't remember his first name. Um, and it's only okay, just like the Leatherface. It's only an okay movie. Like I said, four out of ten. Um, it doesn't have like some of the the budgets not listed, and it only made one hundred eighty five thousand eight hundred ninety eight. So it didn't do very well. And I didn't think it was a very good movie. So that was it for Text Chainsaw until the big budget remake. Wow. Some of these are made, the budgets are different on this. Big budget remake in 2003. Um, just called Text Chainsaw Massacre. Now, I like this movie. I didn't. I still don't think it's as good as the first one. But it's still a pretty good movie. Pretty intense. It did pretty well at the box office. Uh, it made $80,571,655, and then the foreign, 
in, in foreign on uh, foreign markets it made twenty six million five hundred thousand. So totally it made uh, one hundred seven million seventy one thousand six hundred fifty five uh, dollars. And I thought it was a pretty decent movie. I liked the movie. Um, I'd probably give that a nine out of ten. I still the first two are still the best in the series. Even before I do the finish this whole franchise, first two are the best, directed by Toby Hooper. Um, and then next came Text Chainsaw Massacre, the beginning three years later, and this was really panned by critics. But I thought the movie was pretty good. I thought it was they did something different instead of tri trying to remake the same Text Chainsaw movie. Um, I like the film. I'd probably give this a 9 out of 10 also. Uh, the budget is six, for this is $16 million. Uh, United States have made $39,517,763. Uh, foreign have made $12,246,643 million. And the total made $51,764,406. Now, the last one is uh, Text Chainsaw 3D, which critics really pounced on. I saw it on Netflix, and I liked the movie. I know Tony said he didn't like he hated it, but I thought it was decent. I didn't mind the movie. Uh, once again, I just think it was trying to just do like a remake, a 3D remake of the original one. It's still not as powerful as the original one. I'd probably give it an 8.5 out of 10. I don't have much to say about the new ones. The older ones were fantastic. Um, but like I said, uh, this had the biggest, biggest budget of $20 million, probably because of the 3D and stuff. And it made a lot less than the other uh, two big budget remakes. It made $34,341,945. In the foreign box office, it made $12,900,000. And totally, yeah, totally, dude. It made uh, forty-seven million two hundred forty-one thousand nine hundred forty-five dollars. So I mean, it did all right. And then there's uh, a new Leatherface movie scheduled to be released. I don't know when it's coming out. Did someone message me? No, I don't know when the hell it's scheduled scheduled to come out. Um, but I mean, if it, if when it comes down, I get a chance to see. I'll definitely review it. Oh, and I also want to talk about uh, the director for Leatherface, Tex Chainsaw Massacre, Jeff Burr. A lot of people are saying, like, uh, after the way after the fact, they said Jeff Burr should have been hailed as making a great movie with Leatherface, Tex Chainsaw Massacre 3. I didn't think so. But he did some other great movies. Uh, well, he did some good movies and some bad ones. He did a lot of sequels. Um and I have a list of his movies. I was, like I said, I wasn't a fan of Leatherface, Tex Chainsaw Massacre, but I like some of his other movies. Well, he did, uh, he did back to back Puppet Master movies in '93, '94. He did Puppet Master Four and Puppet Master Five, the final chapter, which isn't the final chapter. And both those movies were only okay. I remember that when I originally saw Puppet Master Five, I ju I just after the first half hour, I turned it because I thought it was boring, but I saw it. Again. I saw it not too long ago and I liked it. But I mean, those were only okay. But then he did two, uh, he did three movies I really did like. He did a movie called, I don't know why they changed the title, because I remember when I rented it, it was back in 1987, it was called The Offspring. And it was an anthology series. And for whatever reason, they changed it to From a Whisper to a Scream. That movie was awesome. I think Vincent Price was in that too. That movie was a full on, uh, 10 out of 10. That was a great movie. And then, uh, he did two other movies I really liked. Uh, he did Puppet, uh, not Puppet, Pumpkinhead 2 Blood Wings, as bad as that sounds. The Blood Wings means something else. Um, I love that. That was a very entertaining movie. That was a 10 out of 10. And he did, uh, Stepfather 2, which I didn't know about. And that was really good. I love that too. That was a 10 out of 10. And he did some other movies. I never saw Straight in the Darkness. I never saw Night of the Scarecrow, not to be confused with the older one. Um, and he did Eddie Presley. I never heard of that. Frankenstein and Werewolf, never seen that. Or Devil, I never seen that one. But that's my... Uh, I wonder if that's that uh, the elevator one that M. Night Shyamalan was involved in. I don't know. But that has been my... Uh, my... Uh, 
thing about the Texas Chainsaw Massacre movie franchise. I hope you all like this video. I want to thank my good buddy, Tony Talent. And he's such a good friend for making the awesome thumbnail for me. I hope you all like this uh, film franchise video. Until next time, bye, please. Take care, my legion. Like I said, the very first two are the best ones. And then it went downhill, and then the remakes were okay. But it seems like every, mostly every Chainsaw Massacre just wants to remake the first one, kind of. They don't want to take it in a different direction like the beginning was. The beginning was a little bit of a different direction, but oh well. I hope you liked this video, and like I said, take care, everybody, and I love you guys very, very much. Thank you for watching my video.